Ladies and gentlemen, I am excited to introduce two brilliant individuals to the stage this morning. First, get ready to meet Mike Lepper, a true sales game changer. With a remarkable 13 year journey here at Impact Networking, he has conquered sales, climbing from entry, entry level all the way to leadership. Now, Mike's passion for prospecting is infectious and it guides numerous teams across Illinois and Indiana. And when he's not supporting his teams in the sales world, he's an awesome dad to Rocky and Maddie and a loving husband to Amy. Next, get ready to meet Stephanie Dunlap, our digital marketing director here at Impact Networking with over eight years of digital marketing experience. Now, if you've seen any of our marketing here at Impact, which we hope you have, she is one of the strategic minds behind the magic, driving warm leads to our sales team. And much like Mike, she loves to spend her free time with family and friends, preferably on the beach with a glass of wine in hand. So without further ado, Mike and Stephanie will draw from their joint experiences to dive deep into the art of sales and marketing alignment and show us how to turn this combo into pure business gold. Hello, everybody. We're the ones button up to uh, lunch hour, so we understand that people are getting hungry, bathroom <laughs> breaks, and all that type of stuff. But we're really excited to talk about alignment between sales and marketing. And we hope that we can bring a lot of value to you all in your organizations uh, to take some key things back to uh, implement into your teams right away. Let's do it. <laughs> go. So from an agenda perspective, we're going to talk about the buyers today. The buyers today versus the buyers even five years ago has changed a lot, right? The research and the things that they're doing before even engaging um, has changed. Talking about defining the funnel, right? From top of funnel all the way down and all along that journey and what that looks like. We're gonna talk about lead routing and putting that into action, right? Because when we have leads, we wanna make sure that they get followed up in a, in a quick format. Um, sales and marketing being aligned, right? That's a really important thing. I think Anthony Kuko highlighted it in the beginning uh, when he was uh, kicking off the meeting, how in most cases those two, those two departments were separated. So how are we going to bring those two departments together to drive leads for your business? Really what success looks like, and then a couple things that you can take back to get started, because we understand that you can't boil the ocean in one pass if you're not doing anything in these areas, but a couple quick things that we can implement right away uh, to get your businesses accelerated. All right, let's dive in. So starting with the self-serve buyers. So as Mike mentioned, you know, buyers today are a lot different than they were even five years ago. So we know that a lot of buyers are doing upfront research. They're discovering things on their own before they ever even want to talk to anyone from a sales team or really anyone at the company. They want to do that research on their own. So you can see some stats up here such as 77% of the buyer's journey is now done digitally and buyers complete 80% of their pre-purchase research prior to engaging with a rep. And the kicker here for Mike, 44% of buyers do not want to interact with sales at all. So it's super important that we understand this. And from a marketing perspective, what this means for us at Impact at least is that we try to create content catered for wherever someone is in this buyer's journey. So whether it's someone at the very top of the funnel who's feeling a pain point and type is, types that search into the Google search, uh, we wanna make sure that we're showing up there, whether it's a blog post or maybe an upcoming webinar, we wanna create value for that person even though they're not ready to purchase but we can kind of create impact as a, um, a thought leader in that space and someone that they can go to whenever they do have questions and pain points around you know, their company goals. Um, Mike, what about from the sales perspective? Yeah, so from the sales side, right, depending upon what your business is, are we selling solutions, right? Is it a very transactional organization that you may have? There could be good and bad, right, to going ahead and, and doing the research on the, on the front end. We like to think that that's all, all good, right? To put them in the right mindset, for people to call, but they may get very fixated on, hey, we're, we want to be in this lane and we want to buy this and they don't take a few steps back to really understand what the organization really needs, right? And they get focused in really a tactical area. Um, so there is good, um, you know, to that, but there also can be some challenges. And for most organizations out there, I know at least for Impact, right, we like to have our salespeople engaged and sitting in front of our clients in a face-to-face -face atmosphere versus selling over 
um, a Zoom or a Teams meeting, right? So you could be challenged with a few of those things, but in most cases, you know, the way that the buyers are going through the journey now is a, is a positive thing. Yeah, and also just to add in there, I think that this puts a lot more of the ownership on your marketing team, right? So you need to be creating this tailored content for every step of the funnel, which we'll dive into in the next slide. So then we can serve those leads up to Mike and his team whenever they're ready to talk to a sales rep and they have raised their hand and said, you know, they're ready to, to get reached out to. So going into this funnel. So this is just an example of what a funnel could look like. Obviously, we know that funnels differ from organization to organization and also differ depending on, you know, are you talking about an inbound funnel, an outbound funnel? So Mike and I today kind of wanted to go through an example of this funnel and what it can look like from a marketing and a sales perspective and also starting to think about who's taking ownership of each of these different steps in the funnel. Because later on when we talk about reporting and conversion rates, I think it's really, if if you see something is falling through the cracks, you know which team has ownership over that. So we'll start with the top of the funnel. So from a marketing perspective, the top of the funnel for us is really bringing in new contacts. Um, and I specifically specifically say new contacts and not leads because, you know, maybe these people aren't necessarily fitting our ideal customer. We just want to be bringing in a volume of new contacts that might fit our ICP and then push them towards the middle of the funnel. So some tactics that we've used at Impact that have been super successful is thinking about what are some micro conversions that you can get people's contact information at the top of the funnel, knowing that they're not ready for, you know, to be sold a deal yet. So some of the things that we've been doing are a blog subscription. So anyone out here who is already putting out blog content. If you don't have a blog subscription, I highly recommend doing that. That's a very soft sell. And you know that if they sign up for that, they're at least somewhat interested in your brand and also somewhat interested in your content. So we use that as a really good way to bring in these contacts at the top of the funnel. And then again, we'll nurture them in the middle. But Mike. Yeah. And from a sales side, I th we think it's really important. You'll hear this term that I'll use called ICP, ideal customer profile. Who is your target audience? Who are you trying to engage with? Right, you need to understand what that is. Where do you guys do your best selling, right? What are your most profitable and best relationships and long-term engagements um, that you're working on with your customers? When you can understand who those clients are, then you can put a specific target around that, right? So they have X amount of employees, an annual revenue of this, um, teams that are structured in these different ways, right? So we look at very specific things along the way, along with the verticals, as you saw, you know, that was brought up earlier that we wanna target that we think are the proper audience and the proper people that we should be targeting. So working hand in hand with marketing to make sure that they're getting the content and the information out in front of that right audience is really important. Yeah, for sure. And then moving through to this middle of the funnel piece. So as I said before, we're bringing in those new contacts. So this is where we really want to nurture those contacts to become marketing qualified. So what that looks like for us is oftentimes a mix of different tactics. But one of the things that we rely on heavily in the middle of the funnel is going to be email marketing. So given that we already have this contact information that we got from the top of the funnel, um, and they also have consented to receiving information from us, we can enter them into drip email campaigns depending on what service product offering they are specifically interested to kind of cater more to them you can also get more and more granular with this maybe you do nurture campaigns based on job title or industry whatever makes sense um, for your business specifically but this is really our opportunity to get more and more of that relevant content in front of these prospects um, and typically, you know, we want them to engage with multiple different touch points. As we said before, we know that the buyer's journey takes quite a long time these days, especially in the B2B world. So we want to give them all those touch points and the opportunity to click through um, to different blog posts, webinars, whatever it might be um, to kind of get their engagement scores up so we can hopefully pass them over to the sales team as a marketing qualified lead. Absolutely. And working hand in hand with marketing from a sales perspective, um, unfortunately, every lead that comes through isn't always prime and ready, you know, to buy right away or ready to meet. You know, they may have an idea that they've been talking about at their organization. They're doing a little bit of research. They're engaging with some content out there. Marketing gets that information back and hands it off to sales to start making calls on it. You don't always land every single one of those meetings that you're reaching out to. But what you want to make sure that you're doing is putting nurturing that information, right? So putting them in cadences and giving them uh, qualified drip information that's important and relevant to them to continue to condition them, right? To be like, hey, we need to continue to think about this, get the audience engaged, right? Bring more stakeholders in throughout the journey 
um, that may be you know, involved in the sales process. So getting them into that sales qualified lead is important because then you can create opportunities out of that. Yeah, for sure. And then really, I think Mike's team really takes over the bottom of the funnel, but at least in this example here we have on screen, but from a marketing side, you know, we're really focused on getting them to that sales accepted level. And then that's when we're passing them over to Mike's team. So if you want to kind of. Yeah, so when over. we take them sales accepted, we have a meeting on the books, right? We're looking at what's the potential opportunity for the client. Um, at Impact, we take the approach of we want to get in front of them from a you know in-person perspective. We really want to connect with the audience. We want to find out who's going to be involved throughout the entire sales process from an alignment, right? Because some of these decisions uh, may take a committee or a team of individuals that are involved. So uh, for us to qualify it as, as they're an opportunity to continue to move forward, there's a handful of steps that, need, that we need to go through. And one of those is just an initial engagement meeting from a challenger perspective is just knowing what they're looking to do, what they're looking to accomplish, and then challenging the status quo and getting them thinking in the right way of how do we accelerate our business forward, all the way down to them becoming a customer, right? There could be many steps along the way, depending upon what your business is doing. Um, so you need to understand what your sales process is from start to finish in order to uh, close those opportunities. Yeah, perfect. And I'm actually gonna hop one slide so we can kind of talk a little bit about you know, where we go from here. So say you understand buyers today, you understand um, what your funnel looks like in your organization. Um, so now we wanna take a step back and really discover who your audience is, where your target market is, whether they prefer Facebook to TikTok to Instagram, maybe they're on certain news sites, what kind of videos are they watching? So whenever you are putting together that target, criteria, you know where to reach them as well. And then this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with developing that relevant content. Once you've identified these, your target market and who your buyer personas are, then obviously you can create content for each persona, each pain point, and different things like that. Absolutely. So talking about discovering the audience, right, that's really important. I brought up the ICP a couple slides ago. Really, who are your people? What verticals are, do you really excel in? What new areas, right, or new product services and offerings are you guys trying to expand into? And then how do you get into those areas, right? What's yeah. the approach? Who are we going after and making it a more of a strategic piece than the standard shotgun approach that, you know, maybe most sales organizations do like, hey, just call on everybody and uh, hopefully somebody takes a meeting versus taking out a potential, like a rifle, right, and, and being more targeted at who you're going after and who your audience is. Yeah, and one thing I'll call out here too, something interesting that we've done recently is um, our market research analyst looked at our sales data and then obviously she's done market research as well. So we can pair those two things together. So for example, maybe we find that there are is a lot of opportunity in the manufacturing industry in one of our markets. Then we look at our sales data and we see 2% of our customers are within the manufacturing industry. So we can see right there, there's a gap in our targeting and in our clientele. So what we can do from a marketing perspective is, you know, maybe we launch an industry specific campaign or maybe we even create in tandem with the sales team, maybe some collateral, some education on how to speak to individuals in the manufacturing industry, what job titles you might be looking out for. So I think there's just a lot to be said about those gaps and, and how you can find them through your research. And then going back here, we wanted to start diving, diving into Impact's lead routing system. So this is something we started to develop um, honestly, almost two years ago at this point, and it really started off as a very manual process, and we've been able to automate a lot of that um, over the last couple of years. So excited to kind of share this with you today. So I'll start with the first bucket here, which is nurture, and I know I've talked about this a little bit before, um, but basically this is all about you know the marketing team bringing in these new contacts and nurturing them to a point where we feel like they're ready to possibly talk to the sales team. Um, I'm sure all of you here have filled out a form on a website before and then immediately got contacted by sales and maybe that was annoying to you. So we're really trying to make sure that these leads are nurtured and engaged before we give them over to Mike and his team. Um, and so then once we're done with that nurture stage where we as a marketing team are confident that they're qualified from our perspective, that's when we mark them as marketing qualified and we hand them over to Mike's team where he takes it over to sell. Yeah, so qualifying, right? Those opportunities, it's gone through the whole nurture stage. Now, how do we, who do we trigger and who do we alert, right? And then how do we hold those you know, pieces accountable, right? Throughout the entire process, which is really important. So being at Impact, right? We're a very heavy user of, uh, of Microsoft. So there's a lot of really uh, nice tools out there like the Microsoft Teams platform that some or most of you may be on. 
along with tools like Power Automate. So when it gets from marketing, you know, moving over to sales and keeping those pieces of communication intact, uh, we have a systematic flow that we look at, right, to qualify that, to make sure it fits in that ideal customer profile that we're looking at, right, and then keeps it all the way from start to finish, right? Because at the end, right, the biggest thing is that we want to do is we want to take that from a qualified state and we want to turn it into a selling opportunity. But the other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put together a bunch of leads that may potentially be out there and wasting a bunch of the sales team's time. So how do you bridge those gaps in understanding right, what is qualified and how do you put them into an actual sell state where you can put your people in front of somebody to drive more revenue and growth profit for your business? Yeah, and I think that really goes back to making sure you as the marketing team and the sales team are on the same page about who you're targeting because i think that this happens a lot with sales and marketing alignment is maybe the marketing team is bringing in low quality leads so the sales team when they see those they're they kind of disregard them and it's kind of losing trust with those leads so making sure that you have this right from the get-go can be really important okay so we kind of gave you a high level overview of this leads process, but I'm, we're going to dive into a specific example here. So on the screen, you can see a recent ad that we put out around our compliance offering, um, which falls under our cybersecurity services, um, and this is CMMC compliance. So the first thing we did when we you know, learned that we wanted to build more business here is we started with research. So we did research on not only what, what is CMMC, what are the requirements, but also what types of organizations are more likely to need to be CMMC compliant specifically. And then within those organizations, which job titles are more likely to kind of own compliance at their organization so we can try to target those people. So once we had all of that research, we determined what ad platforms to go for. And surprisingly enough, we went with Facebook ads. Um, I don't know anyone here who's in the B2B space. I would highly recommend checking out Facebook ads just because the sheer volume of people that are on Facebook, you can likely find your target there, especially, I mean, unless maybe you're targeting like 18 year olds, they, they don't like Facebook very much. But um, but outside of that, Facebook, is a, it's been a really, really lucrative tool for, for our marketing team. So we went with Facebook and in the first month alone launching this, we brought in over 200 new leads. Um, so we knew that this was successful. So we developed a CMMC nurture campaign that went out via email. So whenever someone saw this ad and they were intrigued enough to download this CMMC checklist, we would automatically send them an email from our nurture campaign, say five days after they filled out that form. And then if they engage with that first email, they'll get the second email maybe three days later. So this is all automated. We don't have to, we just have to set it up one time and it runs on its own. And then we also, from a marketing perspective, get a alert whenever someone has engaged X amount of time. So you can set that to be whatever you want. But I think for this campaign, if someone engaged three or more times, we were getting an alert. And we want that alert because this person might be engaged enough for us to pass over to Mike's team. So at this point, when we got that alert, that's when we triggered um, the lead to, to go to his team. And before he kind of takes over here, I want to show you all what this looks like in HubSpot, which is what we use for our marketing automation platform. So whenever the marketing team gets alerted that a lead has engaged enough times, we're able to go into their contact record and see everything they've engaged with with our brand. So in this example, you can see Kimberly engaged with the CMMC campaign and she also engaged with the, um, the lead nurture campaign that came after that. And this is important when we're talking about this process because all of this information gets triggered in the lead whenever we send it to the sales team. So when the sales team is getting this information, they're not just getting name, job title, email, they're also getting all of this context. So when they reach out, they know exactly what to talk about. Absolutely, so let's talk about the process, right? And why that's important. But before we do that, why don't we take a, a few steps back and maybe go back to when I started here at Impact in 2010, right, the sales process was a lot different, right? It was go out, knock on doors, right? Collect business cards, come back every Friday, make a hundred phone calls and try and set up new leads and information, right? The, the world has changed, right? The way that people engage with content and information has completely changed what we talked about from the beginning and why that's important. So having a sales operations team like, um, you know, Stephanie was alluding to being aligned with your marketing team is really important. They can go out and vet these opportunities right on the front end to understand 
What content are they engaging with? What are we putting in the CRM? How can we be more credible when we're making these phone calls to these prospects? And from the sheer volume of users, like she was just talking about, just through Facebook alone, there's a lot of opportunity that could be drummed up right from there. So it's really important to understand, right, what is that process from start to finish? And then how does your team, you know, engage with that information? So when that stuff comes through and it's handed off from a marketing perspective and it's accepted, right, we set those meetings, right, and then we take them through the entire process like I had mentioned. So getting in front of our customer, really understanding the business, why that's relevant, why that's important, what content are they engaging with so you can come in and have a productive business conversation, right? A lot of business owners, a lot of business leaders, you know, in this room from a C-level perspective, middle uh, managers, VPs, right? Your time is very valuable, right? So you want to make it, we want to make it as most effective as possible and not come in and not have relevant content uh, to speak with you guys on. So taking you through that process from start to finish. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to show you all just a few examples of what this actually looks like in action. So as I mentioned, whenever a lead has either raised their hand, they filled out our bottom funnel form on our website and they said, hey, I'm ready for a sales sales rep to reach out to me, or they've engaged enough times to meet our lead score minimum that we feel comfortable passing them to the sales team. So when that happens, we get an alert that looks just like what you're seeing here on the screen via email, and this goes to our marketing operations team. Um, and they're just looking at it from a high level and vetting it to make sure that, you know, it looks like it's not spam. It looks like it matches our ICP and we feel comfortable passing it over to the sales team. Um, and we also will look at their contact record in, in HubSpot to see what kind of engagements they've had. Um, and once we feel comfortable passing it to the sales team, as we mentioned before, it will trigger a um, an alert, this kind of card that comes into Microsoft Teams. And our sales operations and marketing operations teams are in this chat and they're able to see these cards as soon as they come in. Um, and our sales ops team really takes a look at it and decides from their perspective it, if it is qualified or not. So they have a couple options at the bottom of this card where they can route this lead. So they can either you know, accept it and it gets routed into our CRM, they can mark it as spam, um, or they can reject it. And that sends it back to marketing for us to determine, do we want to keep this person in our contact database? Do we feel like they might be ICP later on, or maybe they just need to be nurtured more? Or is this totally not ICP spam, and maybe we want to remove them from our marketing campaigns? So depending upon your depth of bench, who's on your team, what the bandwidth is of the organization, right? we all know that visibility is key right into where these things are at. So we talk about CRM, we talk about, you know, automation platforms. We talk about all the different sales tools that you guys probably get peppered with on a day-to-day -day basis from salespeople reaching out, trying to sell it to you. Um, for us, it's important to have this in the CRM because it eliminates a lot of that messaging potentially back and forth, phone calls, right, and that wasted time because we all know that time is money and it's very important. So having dashboarding like this built into the CRM with the accounts qualified, being able to go build drop downs and understand where these all these leads are at because hopefully it's not just one lead a day or a week. Hopefully it's multiple per day, right? 10, 20, 30, you guys eventually get to depending upon what type of efforts you put into a strategy like this. So having visibility, understanding where these are at, and then from a management level, being able to say, hey, we need to do better here. Our, our speed isn't you know, good enough here. And how do we convert these things quick? Because we all know how we operate today, right? We want things instantaneously at our fingertips. Right. We don't want to wait, especially when we want something. We want to go get it right away. And that whole process is important to have visibility into how that's working. Yeah, and also this helps from a marketing standpoint because um, our marketing automation platform and our CRM are integrated. Um, so anytime, you know, as a sales rep is going through this process after the lead has ha been handed off, you know, we can see reports and even information that's been fed back into HubSpot on where these leads are going, because obviously that's incredibly important. We don't want to just hand off all these marketing qualified leads and then not have any idea what kind of ROI we're getting from this. So yeah, this is, this is super, super important to, to our process. Okay, so we kind of want to level set here a little bit and go back to, you know, what this topic is about today, which is sales and marketing alignment. So what does that really look like? So from our perspective, you know, the number one thing is aligning on your goals. And don't just mean your company goals, but also what your goals will be around this new system. So um, I think the first piece of advice we have is to 
set up regular meetings between your sales and marketing leadership if you haven't already done that and also make sure that that whatever is discussed in those meetings is passed down to the rest of your teams um, i know that you know mike's team they obviously are out in the field all the time and so there's a lot of valuable information that they're learning that needs to be fed back to the marketing team so we can make sure to craft um, content that's still relevant to our target audience um, Mike, going into the customer profile. Yeah, we talked about ICP uh, already a couple times, uh, but that again, going back to that, that's really understanding who is your target audience? What are you trying to accomplish with them? And then putting a strategy in place, right? Are we vertical specific? Um, are we really good in this area from an employees and a revenue perspective? Um, who is our target and how can we be most effective spending 80, 90% of our time engaging, if not all 100% uh, with that type of audience? Yeah, for sure. And one other thing I wanted to mention on the goal standpoint is I mentioned creating goals around your lead routing system. Um, one thing that we've kept a close eye on is what we're calling speed to lead. So in an ideal world, we want as soon as someone has filled out that bottom funnel form on our website and has said, I want to talk to a salesperson, we want to get an email or a phone call over to that person within five minutes. So we've been doing a really good job of measuring month over month where things are falling through the cracks, where maybe we can automate things better. So this is kind of what I meant when I was saying, you know, we've been crafting this for a couple of years, but there's still so many optimizations to make and so many ways that you can continue to automate the system. Um, can I add one thing on yeah. that? And the whole, I, in the vein of the ICP and right, understanding your audience, um, many of you, again, like I said, business owners, business leaders in the room, um, I would, my challenge to you all would be this, right? A lot of you have been running your businesses for a long time, um, but I would say, when was the last time you maybe took a step back and allowed the research and the insights out there um, to really dictate what you should be doing, right? We, we get sometimes focused in our lane you know, for a little bit of time and we don't allow the research to really dictate what's going on, the data and that information. I think that could be truly important versus just saying, hey, I know I've been running my business for X amount of time. I know what my customers want. Sometimes that out, outside perspective is, is humbling and it just helps us guide onto the next journey and, and where we're trying to head. Absolutely. Um, diving into communication, I know I talked about setting up those regular meetings, but I really do think that that's integral to this process working. Um, and, and then, as I mentioned, you know, you can gain a lot of insights from those meetings that you can take back to your team and craft content around, you know, new things that you're hearing in the field. So an example that we have is um, we recently, or a couple years back, we decided to create a series of videos on common sales objections. So we did a lot of interviews internally with our sales reps to learn, you know, what are some of the objections you're hearing? And we combined the eight most common and created videos around those. So whenever a rep comes into contact with that objection, they can send out that video, video or at least have that video to call upon, um, maybe to have some talking points around that. Um, so I think that, that that feedback loop is incredibly important to making sure that your marketing up front is, is really crafted well with what people in the field are saying today. Yeah, and going to that research and insights piece, um, I'll talk a little bit about training and why that's important. Um, in a business like ours, it's, it's constantly evolving, right? Marketing, cybersecurity, IT, um, digital transformation, all these different technologies that people are looking to evolve. You know, Dr. Monbeer talked about, uh, you know, AI and what's coming up new with that. Uh, we've made a very consistent effort to um, continue to invest in training, right, and ongoing education for our employees, no matter how long you've been, you've been here. Um, there's new things coming out. There's new strategies. Maybe it's not just exact sales strategy, but just educating our people. So when we put them in front of our customers or potential customers, um, that they're at the top of their game, right? And they're not wasting time and they're, they're making, you know, that most effective as possible. So aligning that piece also with sales enablement, because some of these strategies and depending on what you do for your business um, can bring in a lot of different pieces of technology. So you don't want to just invest in these things and not utilize them. So what, what investments are we making? And then what's the ongoing, you know, training and things that we're putting into play to continue to, you know, get the most out of the technology that we're investing in is really important. Yeah, and also from the sales sales enablement standpoint, um, our marketing team creates a lot of resources for the sales team to leverage, whether that's buyer persona guides or one cheaters that might speak to a specific industry or solution offering. So we're constantly, you know, with this feedback loop, we can understand maybe what services or solutions or areas our reps are having a hard time and we can create content to kind of help push them forward there. Yeah, and we take all that information um, 
that we're constantly getting, right? The, the ads that, you know, Anthony talked about, 4,000, 10,000, right, on a daily basis. That's, that's a lot of information. And what the marketing team does that's great for the sales team is every two weeks they give us what we call a sales digest, right? So here's the, the relevant content, right, that we put out to you guys in, in one specific area. And then we could start to use that from a sales perspective to get out to our potential uh, clients that uh, is really impactful for us instead of just trying to look at it every time it's coming through. It's good to get in a two week digest. Um, accountability, right? Super important. We've talked about a lot of different groups and a lot of different people that touch all of these different things. So having, you know, uh, ways to check in. So Stephanie had talked about, right? You know, whether it's a weekly or a biweekly meeting or whatever you guys dictate is a, is a proper cadence for your business, just to make sure that we're holding people accountable to every step along the way, right? I meet with a lot of business owners and we're talking about their business and growth. It's always, we want more leads. We want more engagement. I want to meet with more potential customers, right? But it takes a lot of work to get there. So don't do all that work and don't keep the, and don't have the accountability checks along the way to make sure that they're hitting all the expectations that you all have from a business, right? Because you get involved in, in going down your lane, like I had mentioned, um, and sometimes we don't take a step back to really look at how effective is this? Is this? How do we need to potentially we need to you know, pivot our strategy or look in different areas? Yeah, and I can even chime in there a little bit. So when I was talking about the speed to lead goals that we have with our lead routing system, um, our sales ops team has taken control of that reporting. So obviously there are ways that, you know, marketing could be, you know, dropping the ball, but they have taken ownership over the reporting and they'll come to us every week when we meet and they'll say, hey, you know, you guys aren't doing as good of a job as you could be passing these leads over to us. So that, I, I just think that's a really great, yeah. great example of accountability. And even when it's something small, just making sure that there's a team that's dedicated to it and they can obviously communicate with other teams to, to remedy that issue. Absolutely. So let's let's get into the technology. I had mentioned there's a, there's a million different pieces of technology out there. Uh, some things that we're heavily invested in and uh, our tech stack has grown. We really started to change um, our CRM over the last three to five years, right? Getting into Dynamics 365 for sales. Um, and that was just a start, right? And, and linking that into HubSpot, you know, from a marketing automation perspective to start to generate and put this stuff into the actual database. But there's a lot of other things out there that you guys can be doing from an engagement perspective, right? Um, like sales loft from a cadency, right? What are we doing uh, to nurture these prospects and keep them, you know, along the sales funnel to turn them into an opportunity or just really a meeting to start? Um, we're using dialers, you know, out there that automate, you know, and do, uh, you know, robust uh, high velocity dialing. So our sales team and, you know, operations team could be making more calls, right, to get more clients engaged. Uh, there's other things like Vidyard and uh, different video you know, programs out there where you can be creating videos and customizing it uh, to wh who your audience is and trying to engage with them, right? So if I'm trying to get a hold of Mike here in the audience, I can make him something super specific on you know, why it's important that we meet. And if you think about content out there, most people would rather watch a video than read an article, right? So there's a lot of different technology that you can be looking at for your business. Uh, but I always say, start small right? And then grow into it versus having a lot of things that you're not doing anything with. Yeah, absolutely. And then that goes right into reporting. So obviously, if you've spent a lot of time crafting this lead routing system, you know, making sure your marketing team is a lead generation engine, uh, you really want to have good reporting, right? So you can make sure to see what the impact of, of those efforts look like. So again, I, I mentioned this before, but it's incredibly important to have your marketing automation platform and your CRM integrated. So we use HubSpot at Impact. So whenever we c connected those two systems, it was really incredible what kind of reporting we could get from that. And as I mentioned before, when we were building out the funnel and what that looks like from both of our perspectives, now that you have that and you have ownership over those different areas of the funnel, you can start to measure conversion rates from one stage to the next. And you can start to see if something is falling through the cracks. Maybe the top of the funnel isn't as big as you thought it was, or maybe people are, are not converting to the middle of the funnel. And as you, since you have that ownership, now you know what team to go to to address that and figure out new ways that you can you know, dive in and new strategies that you can leverage to correct that. Yeah, and one, one last thing on the reporting, right? We all know these sayings out there. You can't manage what you can't measure, yeah. right? And inspect what you expect, right? So these are good ways to just get that information because you're not going to be able to be involved in every single step along the process. But if you get dashboard and reporting information, then being able to hold your team accountable is important.
Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to give you all a few screenshots of what some of our reporting looks like in HubSpot. Obviously, this is just a, you know, a little sneak peek, but the first thing from a marketing side that we are always looking at when we're talking about the top of the funnel and bringing in those new contacts is what sources are bringing in those contacts. So here you can see a graph of the sources of our new contacts over the last month. You can obviously that pay, you can see that paid media is doing a really, really great job. Um, and this can really help us determine where our dollars should be spent or maybe where our dollars are ineffective. So, you know, if I spent 30K on um, paid media last month and I'm not seeing a huge portion here, then I know that that wasn't very effective. So I know I need to pause those campaigns or I need to pivot our strategy. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to show you is kind of similar, but this is actually the sources of our marketing qualified leads. So again, as you saw with those top funnel um, sources, a lot of them were paid media. So it would be a little bit surprising if you didn't see a lot of paid media here. That could maybe tell you that, okay, maybe paid media is good at bringing people on the top of the funnel, but no one's actually converting. So again, this is really important for our marketing team to look at and determine which channels are doing well, which channels are not doing well, and how we can remedy that. And also, I know you probably everyone here is wondering. Um, in HubSpot, you can also start to see, you know, what your monthly recurring revenue is from your marketing qualified leads and also what the lifetime value of those customers look like. So when you go to your boss, you can start to report on, hey, we brought in this many MQLs and this is what the ROI looks like for this month. All right, so we've thrown a lot at you in the last half hour, 40 minutes, uh, but we want to talk about how can you get started, right? And how do we keep it simple Right where it's not like, like I said earlier, boiling the ocean in one pass, um, but we could put ourselves in a specific lane, right? Head down that path and then grow it from there. So from our side, it's it's the CRM, right? And and there's still a lot of companies out there um, that maybe haven't invested in that, or hey, I can't get my salespeople, you know, to put information into the CRM, right? And everybody have challenges with that, I assume, right? Uh, as everybody smiles at me and laughs, right? Um, what I found that's really effective is just explaining the why, right? How salespeople always want to know why is it going to be beneficial to me? And they always want instant gratification, but we know that sales processes can be long, right? They could be months, uh, if not years to get them through the funnel. So if you explain the why of putting the information in, uh, usually that'll resonate with most um, and it'll allow them to get that information in there. And then if you could take a, a platform like a HubSpot, Right, and link that into your CRM. I think that's a perfect way to get started right, for your business. And then there's going to be all those other tools that I had mentioned that you could bolt on you know, at any point once you have this thing going. But start there and then continue to drive. Yeah, and I think we hammered this next point home, um, but aligning on your company goals, your lead goals, and your targeting, your ICP, that is so, so important. And I think it's also not just something that you do once at the beginning of this engagement. It's something that you should be looking at, you know, whether you decide to do it quarterly, yearly, whatever it is, but as, you know, buyers are changing and, you know, just the landscape is changing, making sure you're staying on top of, you know, what that looks like. Yeah, and on that, so again, there's a lot of business owners that I also speak with, and generally they have marketing budgets, right? And I put that in quotes because it's one of those things, right? I'm getting some smiles again, right? Uh, from the audience that it's there, but it's not always a necessity, right? But how invested are we in the growth of the organization? That's what I always talk about. And what are you really looking to accomplish, right? Is this a growing organization that you guys have, or is this a lifestyle business, right? That you're, that you're looking to just, you know, uh, continue to go. Um, so understanding that, understanding your budget, and then where your dollars would be most effective, right? I think it's a really good alignment piece for you all to be meeting, you know, with leadership and, and your business partners and who that may be. Um, we talk about implementing a lead routing process. We've, we've hammered that home. Uh, <laughs> simplify it as much as possible, right? Sometimes when too, there's too many cooks in the kitchen, right? There's not too many things getting done, right? So simplifying that as best as possible, depending upon how sales and marketing are currently aligned, in your organization today and defining who is going to handle that right we talked about marketing and sales operations going to sales and all the people involved in our process but it's, it didn't start like that it started you know small and then it grew as our departments have grown and our business has grown yeah for sure and also on that point i think just getting started even if it's a manual process you will there'll be a lot of learnings that you have so whenever you do build out that automated system you have those learnings to make sure that you address those when you're building out your system 
Um, and then the last thing we wanted to go through is just reporting. As I mentioned before, that is once you get this set up, one of the most important things is I'm sure your boss will ask you how effective is this? So again, giving those speed to lead metrics, being able to see between each stage of the funnel what those conversion rates look like. And you know, from there, you can really start to create goals around those lead stages, not just how many leads you want a month, but also how many um, you, know, you need at the top and in the middle to get, to get that number there at the bottom. And I think that wraps it up for us today. Thanks everyone.